All right, guys, today we've got a Kawasaki Prairie 650, or excuse me, 360. It's been sitting a long time. Uh, guy says it won't start. Ran when he parked it, I don't know, five years ago maybe. So we're going to take the carb out, clean it, see if we can get it running good. We're going to start by taking the seat off, pop the seat. We pull that lever hard and seat releases. From there we got to take this plastic shroud off. It's going to be a couple bolts here, a couple bolts up on top. Gas cap off, shifter knob off, cover should slide right out. With the gas tank cover off, we're going to come over here and remember to shut the fuel line off. And then inside there, and it's hard to see, but you can follow the fuel line down to right where my finger is. You're going to unhook that. I guess you could unhook it up at the pickcock too, it doesn't really matter which one. With the fuel line unhooked, you should be able to just grab the back of this gas tank and lift up some and pull and wiggle and out it comes. And I'm going to need a second hand so I'll pick up when I get this out. With the gas tank out, now it's pretty easy to work on, we're going to undo your intake clamp. Motor side intake clamp, undo the choke cable, undo the vent, and then we're going to have to take the throttle cable out too, and I'll show you more of that when we get the carb loose. So now that I've got the clamps loose, both sides, I use a 12 millimeter wrench to make that loose, and I twist it out by my fingers to get the choke cable out of there. With all that loose and line off, we can just twist the carb to the side until it comes loose. All we're looking for is enough to get to the side of it to get this Phillips screw out. Looks like somebody's been in here before. With the Phillips screw out we can pull the cover off. Now, and I'm not sure if I can slide that throttle cable out, twist it around. Pop it out of its groove. Like that. Set that off to the side. Unhook the electrical connection here. And use the Phillips head screw to get to the bottom one. With both the wires unhooked, we can drag the carb out. I'm going to leave the drain line connected to the four wheeler. And I can't do it one hand. With the carb off and all four of the Phillips head screws out, pop the bolts, lift that straight up. Honestly, other than a little bit of residue in the bottom corner, this carburetor is not too bad. There's your main jet. There's your pilot jet, air fuel screw. So all the liquids out of the carb. I'm gonna bring it over to my toolbox because I got a spot that everything sits pretty flat and nothing goes flying. I'm gonna pull out the air screw first. And what you do is you drive it all the way in until it's seated count how many turns so when it's time to put it back together we know how to reset with the air screw out now I'm going to take the float bowl off or the float excuse me and you just push this pin which is push it out to one side left or right on this carburetor doesn't matter once that's out we can lift the float out with the needle Set that off to the side. Now I'm going to pull the main jet and the pilot jet. First we're going to remove the pilot jet. It's pretty cruddy. I don't know. 
you can, yeah, you can see through it, but it's definitely got some crud in it. Then we'll pull the main jet. That one's a lot bigger. You can clearly see that one's not plugged. Still needs to be cleaned. I'm going to actually pull the emulsion tube out. I'm going to make sure all those holes are free and clear. Then we're going to spray carb cleaner out through everywhere just to make sure everything's nice and clean on the top side of the carburetor I'm going to pull the four screws pop the cap that holds the diaphragm slide be ever so gently with it so I don't rip nothing pull it right out and that's sealed up pretty well and Inside there's a spring, but there's no need to take it apart if it if it's sealed the way it is They don't really get dirty of anything Well, it's just peeled apart. So there you go Spring diaphragm as long as it's not ripped you're good to go But I do like to take that off because now I can clean the port if it's dirty and Any other spot that may have gotten dirty Real quick guys, I misspoke. That jet is not your pilot jet. There's a jet down in that hole that is your pilot jet. This one is not. So with that out also, it's real important. Spray carb clean down straight through there. There's a little tiny hole. You can just see it. It comes out into the body of the carburetor right there, that hole. And then also by spraying carb cleaner down this hole, you'll see it come out this hole and that little hole. And what I like to do is, as I'm spraying it through, I like to plug each hole individually and force fluid through another channel and out. And then same thing with this and this. You just blast it out with carb clean. Whatever hole it's coming out, I like to put my finger over it, kind of restrict it so it will go out other orifices. And same thing here, you blast this one, this one, that one. Clean out that, that just runs up to your diaphragm right there. Yep. Don't go chintzy on the carb clean. It's your friend. And then don't forget, spray carb clean into that hole. You can pretty much put the nozzle right into it and spray it. And when it comes puffing out through here, you can plug your finger and force it through another channel. Just make sure you get it nice and clean. For cleaning the emulsion tube, I have this little tiny set of drill bits. I don't know, you probably ain't even going to be able to see them. I guess you can. I like to run a drill bit through every hole individually, make sure they're nice and clean. Nice and easy. You're not trying to drill out any material, you're just trying to make sure there's no residue built up. You go through every hole, a little time consuming. I also do the same thing on the jets, as long as I have the right size drill bits. The emulsion tube done, I put it back in the carburetor. Doing the same thing with the jets. Like I said, I'm not drilling them out. It's super, super loose. I'm just trying to clean up the corrosion that's left, the varnish, oxidation, whatever you want to call it. Just trying to clean it up. That's all. Sometimes if I don't have the proper drill bit that I need, I find that a standard set of torch tip cleaners can really get the job done also. They're not as precise, and you got to be a little more careful, but it'll get the job done. With the Pilot Jet fresh out of the cleaning solution, nice and clean. You can actually see light through that. Oh, yeah, right there. Put that back in there. Tighten her down. Then it'll be the air screw. Put the 
spring back on it. And down inside there, there is an O-ring, then a washer, then your spring screw. Like I said, you're going to screw it all the way until it seats and then back it off however many turns it was originally. Um, mine was out two turns. I think somebody had been messing with it in the past. Normally it's one and a half turns out. And I'm going to start at one and a half turns and go from there. Put the jets all back in. Air screw back in, set at one and a half turns. I'm going to drop the needle on the float down into the seat, like so. Put the pin back in. Line it up, which is a very difficult one handed. Once the float backs in, it's back in. Make sure it's free. And you're looking for this right here to be level with the surface where my thumb is roughly. You don't want it up, you don't want it down, you want it to be level. Now uh, that's the way it needs to be. We'll get the bowl back on and then move to the top of the carburetor. With the bottom all buttoned up, we're going to flip it over. Put the top side back together. Drop the slide back in. You'll see the needle because the spring's not on it. moving so you just got to be careful that you don't knock the needle out of place if you put your finger on the spring slide it back in the needle's got to drop down into its seat there and that's sitting just perfectly make sure your diaphragm's in the groove grab your lid make sure the spring goes inside Right down on top, fits nice and snug. Drop your uh, four screws in it and tighten her down. Carburetor's all back together. Got the carb all back together, we're gonna put it back in the four wheeler the same way we took it out. First by putting the throttle cable in. Make sure that's seated down in its hole good. Once it's finally down in there, like I said, one-handed sucks. Spin it around. Drop her in. This time we're going to actually put a 10 mil wrench onto it and make sure it's tight, but still got to make sure there's a little bit of slack in there. I don't want to too tight. I'm not going to tighten that down quite yet until I actually get it on the four-wheeler. We're going to put the cover over it. Washer, Phillips head screwdriver. Then I'm going to work it back up into the intake and air side intake. After your throttle cable on, cover on, hook up your two wires, vent line, then put it in. Once the carburetor's back in place, I normally put it on the engine side first and at an angle I drag up the intake tube and put it on and then kind of wiggle it into place. You can tighten up your throttle cable knot with a 10 mil. Just snug it. Put your vacuum line back on. Put your choke cable back in. Now's a good time to make sure it's working properly and releasing properly. Once that's verified, you can slide it back in and thread it in there and use a 12 mil to snug that down. Once your carb's all bolted in, tightened down, everything's secured, 
Time to get the gas tank back in. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but up there, which my lighting ain't the greatest, but rubber grommet right there. This uh, fitting has to go up into there. It'll go, you just gotta wiggle it around. Put the gas tank back in place. Put our gas cap cover on, gas cap. Make sure these are lined up. Both sides. Make sure that screw in there and there. Then we'll put these in. Pretty much button it all down, start it up. Okay, with the shifter back on. See, everything's buttoned up. Let's see if she starts. That's a perfect carb clean job right there. No choke needed or anything. Hope you guys enjoyed this video.